สวัสดีค่ะ I'm Dr. s h i y a n i n Gert p o n y a m Assistant Secretary General Office of Insurance Commission Thailand, and welcome you all to the Thailand Insurance Tech Fair 2022, and welcome you to the session presented by the OIC Thailand. It is undeniable that digital and technology has become a mega trend everywhere. While the OIC and the insurers in Thailand are moving by s e s i o n exploring risk, especially the emerging risk, is also needed to bring into spotlight. The OIC, as well as all regulators around the world, are aware of this new landscape. The topic of IT risk management and cybersecurity brought into discussion, and for the in early of September, an opportunity to share the OIC experience. In cyber resilience assessment framework or CRAF development, in the annual meeting of Asian Forum of Insurance Regulators, the meeting showed much interest in how the OIC implemented international standard on cybersecurity and how we designed CRAF to suit the insurance context in Thailand. I can tell you that you can anticipate seeing the cyber. And therefore, I take this opportunity to present you the CRAF development in Thai perspective, under the topic of cyber resilience assessment by design, enabling cyber potentials into real actions. In this presentation, I will start with introduction of Thai insurance market, and then I will bring you to the OIC journey of IT risk management and CRAF development, and finally. We will summarize this presentation in view of international leaders. The International Association of Insurance Supervisors or IAIS has issued in 2000 regarding the insurance industry. This report contains a description of insurance innovation type that drivers and possible impact based on scenario analysis. The basis of the scenario was to increase to which technology to the insurance landscape. At the more benign level, scenario one, assuming that maintain the overall customer relationship and leverage technology firms for their own advantage. In this scenario, the insertion of technologies and startups in the value chain will occur. And scenario two considers the case where the insurance value chain is increasingly disaggregated. Such that insurers may no longer own the customer relationship, and instead rely on business relationship with technology firms. And finally, in the worst case scenario, scenario three consider the possibility that big tech firms leverage their technology and analytical advantage to squeeze out the traditional insurers. This would this would therefore adversely affect traditional insurers, and they have. Might become a sort of thematic community platform, such as the health issues. Now, let's look at how digital technology progress in Thai insurance industry. In 2021, the OIC conduct research on digital transformation. This study surveyed all stakeholders, including insurers, regulators, and tech companies. And as shown on the slide, the use of digital is currently concentrated on the front office. Distribution is the highest digital implemented, followed by marketing and customer services. But the good news is, the insurers have a plan to extend their digitalization to all value chains. As can be seen on the right hand side, the next couple of years, the direction of investment will extend to claims, payments, and customer services. And if we compare the progress of technology use in Thai industry compared with the IAIS scenario, Thai insurance industry is now with a slight signal of progress to scenario two. We then must urgently prepare for the change of business model and landscape. And as digital technology has increasingly been dominating financial market, cyber risk therefore t o u c h i n table. Based on the Global Risk Report 2021 by World Economic Forum, cybersecurity failure is ranked number nine among the top risks facing the world. The business, government, and household cybersecurity infrastructure will be outstripped by increasingly sophisticated and frequent. 
cybercrime, resulting in economic disruption, financial loss, geopolitical tensions, and or social instability. I believe that we all admit that cyber resilience is very important, but allow me to summarize the key factors. Why does it become more and more important in these days? First, companies are not judged by whether they were hit by a cyber attack, but by the character of their response. It is impossible to reach complete security in the cyber domain. So the insurer leaders must shift to reinforcing cyber resilience to the utmost. Secondly, cyber attacks on other organizations in the digital supply chain can negatively impact downstream business and their operations. The European Union Agency of for Cybersecurity, or ENISA, analyzed the increased risk from cyber attacks on or via the supply chain in its report. And moreover, based on the cybersecurity outlook in 2022 by the World Economic Forum, as many as 87% of executives are planning to improve cyber resilience by strengthening resilience. And do your organization follow this trend? Thirdly, cyber resilience is so important due to the accommodation to fintech development in the insurance industry, which could result in higher cyber exposure. Last but not least is the geopolitical threat landscape. It is important to remember that cyber warfare does not have boundaries. Since Russia's invasion of Ukraine began in early 20. 2020 attacks have emerged as part of the offensive. The specifics, for example, some rebuilt and blocked down Russian threat actors, TTPs, and indicators of compromise. Some uplift their threat intelligence and incident report capabilities. And how your organization, are you prepared for this threat? According to the regulation on the IT risk management in Thailand, the international standard like COVID-5, ISO, and IST cybersecurity framework were studied and was adjusted to according to the context of insurance industry. This regulation address requirement stating three lines of defense structure and formulation of IT risk management policy. IT security shall be compliant with risk according to the confidentiality abilities. The regulation also requires insurers to have IT audit and compliance function, and cybersecurity framework is a key function of identification, protection, detection, response, and recovery. Getting ready for the cyber attack. The side that we find is a cyber drill. OSD has engaged cybersecurity to help us design the insurance industry. Each insurance company sent a team comprising risk management, legal and compliance, and corporate communications. During the exercise, the facilitators sent cyber injections to the insurers and requested them to respond ranging from detection, containment, impact assessment, reporting to management and the regulators, and how they communicate to the customers. And in the final part of the exercise, we arranged a knowledge sharing session to provide recommendation for each injection. In, in addition to the insurance sector cyber drill, OIC, together with Bank of Thailand and Security Commission, organized financial sector cyber resilience program. The three regulators are aware of the cyber risk is potentially pose a systemic risk. So we need to work side by side to safeguard the financial stability. And in every year, in the T-Rex uh, arranged board awareness and cyber resilience leadership program, we bring board of directors from banking, securities, and insurance sector to sit together and learn and discuss about cyber preparedness. For financial sector of cyber exercise is also organized once a year. Representatives from bank, security companies, and insurance companies participate in this exercise. The three regs Computer Emergency Response Team, or CERT, from each sector also joined this exercise. Triggers are set based on the nature and severity for each industry. This trigger will indicate the level of actions and the need for coordination. 
In the situation, the cyber incident could lead to the severe impact to the three sectors. The crisis management committee, comprising of the leaders from the three RECs, will take action. And after laying out the framework for cyber resilience, the next initiative is the CIRAF project. The objective of this project is to provide a standard framework for assessing cyber risk and control. However, the development faced with many challenges. A challenge is that the international standards are principle-based, and there is no guidelines that define specifically for insurance business. Therefore, we have a task to analyze business profile by the context of Thai insurance industry. Another challenge is that other financial regulators, such as Bank of Thailand and SEC, also have its own CRAF. Therefore, some regulated entity may have to comply with the CRAF from more than one regulator. For example, life insurance product must obtain a license from the SEC. For that, not only they must comply with the OIC CRAF, it also must comply with the SEC CRAF as well. Aware of this OLAP, OIC recognized the importance of CRAF alignment with the other regulators. The last key challenge is that change in the technology and industry risk profile will make the CRAF outdated. So CRAF is needed to keep update to pretty periodically. In the CRAF, the scope of assessment must be defined. The scope is determined by the infrastructure and application or software that support and provide services in the core activities. Next, critical data, will, which all data, must be identified. The scope of assessment includes the data management, like the data storage, transfer, and analysis. And the scope of assessment also extends to the affiliate company, business partner, and IT third-party services. Next step. The CRAF standardized the inherent risk assessment criteria, which can be summarized into five risk domains. IR1 technology and connection is determined is the determinant risk of interconnection technology and traffic. IR2 delivery channel reflects the type and channel of services. IR3 products and technology services reflects the online product and service. IR4, business size and organization structure, is the factor reflecting structure, number of employees, and the IT environment. IR5, cyber threat records, is the factor that indicates the presence of cyber threat target and potential recurrence. From the study and analysis, it was found that IR2 and IR3 must be fine-tuned to suit the nature of insurance business. For example, uh, the IR2 and IR3 are adjusted associated with the number of e-policy transaction, number of claim transaction via online, and etc. Following the research, data collection, and making the industry, OIC arrived at the detailed inherent risk assessment for Thai insurance industry. The inherent risk is designed in three levels, as which is which are high, medium, and low. And this slide shows overview of all risk factors and some examples of scoring indicators. IR1 technology and connection. Each factor consists of number indicators such as internet access volume, type of usage, and type of technology. For IR2 delivery channel, it will be assessed by the type of service channels and transaction, especially the online. IR3 product and technology services, such as percentage of volume of online service, number of policies sold online, and etc. And IR4 evaluate the business structure related to SI the following the attacks. The attribute derived from each domain, as shown in the technology and connection and delivery channel, are the most weighted at each of 25%. Product and technology service is set at 20% due to the online transaction in Thailand is not that dominant. For the business size and organization characteristics, the weight is 15% because the current digitalization is still halfway to the full operation. The last factor in cyber threat records is weighted at 15% as insurance critical system is not as critical as other financial services in terms of the real-time transaction. Next, security will be assessed. Controls is 
categorized in six domains, which are governance, identification, protection, detection, response and risk recovery, and third-party risk management. In the developing the control assessment criteria, we apply the OIC relevant regulations and guidelines as the baseline. For the control maturity, it will be evaluated in three levels. The baseline level is the mostly referred to the controls required by the regulation. The intermediate level is determined by adding higher level of controls. The benchmark refers to some controls from the best practice. For advanced level, the standard mostly refers to additional the best practice. And this slide shows the criteria of, for level of control maturity assessment. CM1 governance, this control relates to IT and cyber risk governance in conform with the three line of defense. The next four domains ranging from CM2 to CM5 are related to cybersecurity control, starting with the identification, which covers scope and control of IT asset, personal data, and cyber risk identification across the critical system. Next, the protection domain relates to the assessment of cyber protection capability, starting from the aspect of human resource, control over cyber exposures, and threat intelligence. For the detection and response and recovery, they measure the ability to detect cyber threats and readiness to respond to the cyber incident. The sixth module is the third-party risk management, for example, risk management policy relating to the third-party selection, cyber management plan, and etc. And after the assessment, the result will be plotted in the risk map, shown in green, yellow, and red zone. Only companies in the red zone will be required to have management action. Such company must have a plan, detail of actions, and prioritization of improvement actions. According to this draft of site assessment framework, OIC conduct a pilot test for the result is demonstrated in this graph. For life insurance, the overall assessment indicates that most of life insurers have inherent risk at low to medium level. However, there are five companies showing high level of inherent risk. And when we dig down further into these five insurers, it's found that all other large rationale is owing to the use of technology and online transaction is prevailing, both in running operation and in providing online transaction services to the client. In terms of control maturity level, most of, most of life in companies shows a satisfying result. Due to the overall CM result, life insurance industry has well performance in governance, detection, and third-party risk management. And however, a few of insurers still need improvement in the, in the identification, which also include personal data management and response and recovery. The life insurance insurers is at low level. The rest of them shows in the group of medium risk level, it is observed that Although these insurers apply technology and provide online transaction, but it is limited in terms of types and volume. In particular, more than half of the insurers do not have a mobile application and for the service via social media or instant message is limited to only providing information to the clients. And according to the assessment result of control maturity, non-life insurance industry is also doing good in governance and third-party risk management. However, there are still room for improvement, especially in protection, detection, and response and recovery. Though some insurers of the CM score below or at the baseline level may have the inherent risk at the low level, but the need to enhance the controls to par with the good practice cannot be neglected. These are the areas the OIC and the industry should pay more attention to strengthen the cyber resilience capability. In the pilot test, we put quite a effort on the data verification. The data collected were used to refine the assessment criteria. We performed statistical analysis to aid in determining the threshold of all level of risk. The assessment criteria is then finalized by the expert judgment. In the CRAF development, OIC received a variety of questions from the industry. I summarized here the two questions that were frequently asked. 
And the first FAQ is whether CRAF can be used in place of IT. The correct answer is no. CRAF is designed based on the best practice and overall industry standards. Whereas the company's risk conduct based on the risk appetite, in-depth risk profile, and tailored assessment methodology. Nevertheless, CRAF can also allow the insurers to benchmark its assessment framework with the industry standard. And the second FAQ is the linkage between CRAF and IT audit. That was the objective of the two functions. Actually, CRAF and IT audit functions develop from the similar ground, as its principle is based on the regulations and standard of practice. However, there is difference in terms of objectives and roles. In the aspect of risk, CRAF as a first line of defense, which a self-assessment is conducted by the risk owners. And the assessment should be reviewed by the risk team, which perform as the second line of defense. And the assessment re result will lead to the management action in upgrading the quality of risk management. In the other hand, IT audit is an assurance function line of defense. It is performed by it focus on patient, though it can still provide recommendation for improvement. And that's the journey of OIC introducing CRAF. Finally, I would like to quickly summarize the takeaways. First, the CRAF approach needs customization for the nature of insurance business and industrial environment. Pilot test and data verification is important to attain quality and practicality of the assessment not only for regulators in designing industry standard, but also to your organization to implement this framework. And communication and discussion with the regulator and experts is key to effective implementation. And shown at the top is the minimum requirement for effective CRAF. The OIC's plan for the next steps is to finalize and implement the CRAF. OIC will continue to build and upgrading cyber resilience. We also will continue to strengthen collaboration among financial regulators and cyber threat intelligence at the sector level and at the national level. Thank you very much for your interest and attention. Hope you enjoy the CRAF and make a start for your organization. สวัสดีค่ะ